Hey guys, a big welcome to our YouTube channel. Let's crack it. So today we are going to build a machine learning project, a beginner project using Google Research Collab. And the best part about this video is that no software installation or configuration is required because we are going to run it on the Google Research Collab. So just a browser is required, any browser like Chrome. Now Iris floor class classification using machine learning. So another best part about this video is we are going to run build the project using three algorithms. So three different algorithms. So if you are a beginner to machine learning field, so this is the right place here. Yeah. And also if you haven't done any project on your own, so definitely this is going to be a best, the best guide for you guys. So let's start our today's session. So instead of directly diving into the coding part of building the machine learning project, so let's have a small introduction. Like what actually is machine learning about? See, basically machine learning is nothing but all about the predicting. Like we are giving, uh, giving some input data and then after we will be training the system. So depending upon the training, like uh, we will be getting the output, like uh, we will be getting some predictions. So that's all about the machine learning. So here our project is about like we will be giving some uh, feeding the system with the input data like that is called as training data. So there are three categories of flowers like one, two, three iris uh, these three flowers belong to the category of iris so we call this data set as iris data set so versicolor setosa and uh, virginica are the three, three types of flowers so for our machine learning system we are going to feed the system with these inputs like the inputs will be sepal length petal length sepal width and petal width of the flowers so all we have these three flowers and the parameters are these i mean variables are these four variables so the output will be the class of the flower like once we give the input these four inputs will be getting an output like whether these uh, four measurements belong to the versicolor or setosa or virginica so how this is going to happen like first of all we'll be having some data set the most essential part of any machine learning project is the data set so we'll be having some data set so we are the data set here we are going to use iris data set so we'll be feeding the data set to our model and then after and we use uh, different kinds of algorithms here and then after we are uh, directly predicting the output like uh, the testing data the most important and the essential part of any machine learning project will be the data set analysis. So first of, first step will be the uh, data set collection. We need to collect the data set. We need to clean the data set. Some pre-processing should be done. But here we are going to use the famous data set that is called the iris data set. So iris flowers. So this is available on the internet. So I have directly downloaded. So it's a CSV file, comma separated values. Now let's talk about some stuff about the data set. Like total number of rows will be 150. Like 150 rows of data will be available and each row contains five columns. So now if we observe clearly, these 150 rows are divided into three instances like 50, 50, 50. So we have already discussed, right? Uh, there are three categories of, categories of flowers. So 50 rows of each flower will be available. And if you uh, observe the columns here, each there are total in total five columns. And the first four columns will be the parameters like sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Here you can observe like one, two, three, four but the fifth column will be the class of the label like class label whether these four parameters belongs to setosa or versicolor or virginica so if we uh, just in a nutshell to explain it initially we are going to feed the data like uh, train the system like we'll be giving the input this is called the training data set so we'll be dividing these 150 rows into some uh, training rows and the testing rows so initially we'll be training uh, the system using the training data and then we'll test with the test testing data like we'll be giving the entire we'll like uh, we'll be fitting the model like if you uh, consider this is this as the input and the last column as the output so we'll initially we'll be training right so for some uh, suppose that 120 rows we are uh, in feeding the system like for 120 rows we'll be passing the input and output we'll be passing input and output and for the last 30 columns we'll be uh, just testing like we'll only pass the input and we'll uh, check the output and depending upon the predicted output, like predicted output versus the actual output, we calculate the accuracy of our system. So that's all. So let's start our coding part. Hey guys, here comes a Chrome browser. I have just typed Google Collab. And the very first link which is visible is a welcome to collaboratory. So all you need to do is just sign up to the Google Collab. So once you're done with the sign up, like just open the new notebook. So here it is. So let me open the new notebook. But uh, the thing is, I already have built the project. So this is our project, which we are going to discuss in this session. So flower classification, iris flower classification using three different algorithms we'll be discussing. So before that, uh, let's observe some cool features about the Google Collab. So if you are new to Collab, like uh, most of you guys might have already experience with the Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is almost similar to Google Collab, but those who are new to this, like uh, collab allows you to do uh, like a uh, python coding and also most of the data science and machine learning projects can be built 
on this because uh, you don't need to do any external setup or configuration yeah here actually there are two parts like code part and the text part so once you click on the code part just sl will be i mean allocated new code cell so the best part about this collab is like uh, you can run any part of the cell independently uh, like uh, you can run any individual cell and text part allows you to uh, like uh, describe the code so you can also use that feature and uh, here comes our project let's, let's start uh, discussing about our project so the very first step to do any machine learning project is a data set so once you have some data set you can do anything with the data set like uh, you can explore your own ways you can explore with your own algorithms you can uh, you can do anything so here the data set we have used is iris data set so all you need to do is uh, like uh, you need to upload here there is a symbol right so upload to session storage so it will be allotted some storage also so i have already uploaded the iris data this is a comma separated values so guys i am putting the link for the data set you directly download the data set and even i will be uh, putting the code also so that it hardly takes you 10 minutes for to execute this project so my suggestion is that you just take this code as a reference and try to build the project once you uh, know how to build the project then try to explore your own ways like uh, take some different kinds of data sets and uh, build a, build the project and write the code try to write the code on your own so just the, consider this code as a reference only and i am putting the entire resources in the description so all the best guys so all the best for your first machine learning project let's start so let's begin from the very first code cell so if you observe the first code cell is about uh, importing like uh, required essential library so numpy manplotlib cburn and pandas are imported so if you observe import numpy as np so in each uh, line as we have used like this is for known as aliasing so instead of typing always numpy matplotlib dot plot just a shortcut like i can use np plt sns so that's, that's about uh, aliasing now discuss about uh, let's uh, discuss about the individual libraries numpy is uh, about uh, dealing with arrays like uh, large arrays and matrices and whereas matplotlib we can plot the graphs uh, using this library and cburn even cburn is built on matplotlib but we, it is a uh, data visualization tool we can make the graphs look attractive and finally the pandas is for even pandas is a data manipulation used for it is used for so you will be knowing uh, like uh, in the course of our project so let's start with the second code cell okay let me run the first code cell so here there is a run symbol uh, after even though i run the code nothing happens because just importing was done nothing is displayed in the console just imported all the libraries are imported now here comes the second code cell like uh, i have to load the data set so let me show you the raw data set first of all so now the file which we are looking is a data set file dot csv file comma separated values so in total if you observe this data like uh, there are 150 rows and 50 rows of each category of flower like uh, the first 50 rows are of iris setosa flower category and then next 50 rows are versicolor iris versicolor finally iris virginica so all we need to do is like uh, we feed the system with this data and some part of the data and some part of the data is uh, left for the testing so uh, once the system is uh, uh, ready like uh, we feed the system feed the data into the system we can uh, verify or predict the values for the testing data so here if you clearly observe the first four columns are for the petal length petal width sepal length and sepal width like and the final column is for the class label so we are done with importing part now let's uh, load the data set so before loading data set i have just created a list so the list element contains all the column names like uh, sepal length width length uh, petal length and petal width and class labels so these are the column names so directly i'm using the pandas function right uh, to load the data set pandas dot read csv so this is a function to read the csv file like uh, we are giving the two arguments one argument is the file name which we have uploaded and uh, the next the names of the columns like uh, names equals to i'm passing the list here we have created so that's it uh, we have successfully loaded the data set so here uh, you can see the small function like df.head this gives us the top head part or uh, top five entries of the data like uh, so we can simply observe right uh, 0 to 50, uh, 4 rows this is how our data looks like even we can uh, explicitly give a number like uh, i want to see the all the entries so this is how it works and once the data is loaded then next here comes the visualization part so let me use df dot describe 
so here can't uh, count the total count of sepal length entries 150 total count of sepal width 150 and same as petal length and width so the mean if you observe the mean of the sepal length so 5.84 units similarly we have got so this is a very clear analysis of our data like uh, using this function uh, simply we can get the entire analysis so i am collapsing it so now i am running this code cell like a pair plot so sns this is the seaborn uh, library we have imported and we are supposed to pass two arguments the first one is data and second uh, the class labels so that uh, we get different color combination for different class labels so clearly here we can say that three different color com uh, like uh, color coding for three flowers setosa vascular and vaginica now how many graphs did we get like we got here 4 into 4 16 graphs because each of the parameter is plotted against each uh, like uh, each other parameter like sepal length against all other three ca four categories so on the whole we can make several conclusions from these graphs like i can find the highest longest sepal length which flower has the longest sepal length if we consider here the blue color flower has the longest sepal length and which flower has a longest petal width the blue color flower which flower is easily differentiable from other two flowers like uh, the blue color flower any graph if we take other two flowers are uh, having lot of common points so easily differentiable is uh, setosa flower in this way we can uh, make uh, several conclusions that's how that is called the visualization and analysis of the data by then we have finished the data visualization part like we have made some analysis on the data now let's uh, separate the input columns and the output columns so here in this code cell we observe that initially the data is in the matrix form isn't it so this is a matrix data is a matrix and even df is a matrix uh, initially so now i have created two new matrices matrices but that these two matrices uh, like uh, i have performed slicing operation the slicing of matrix so if you observe the syntax it tells us that uh, like uh, i have sliced the last column print of x so you'll uh, get a clear idea if i print x see the last column class label is removed this is uh, called as uh, slicing and if i look at the y it only prints the class label only the last column so this is how it is and then i have to play, uh, split the data into training and testing so in in a nutshell i can say that in total we were having 150 column 150 rows so out of these 150 rows i have to split into training part and the testing part so here this is the important parameter uh, like if i consider zero if i put it as 0 0.2 so i get 120 tra uh, training rows and 30 testing rows so let me show you so for this i have used directly sklearn uh, this stands for scikit even this is a uh, python library which is useful for the machine learning projects i am just printing the training uh, input this is the training input so it contains only uh, it contains 120 rows of four columns whereas printing y train i get only the output part that is the last column 120 columns 120 rows of last column and if i print the testing part we get only 30 rows yeah this is so that's how it is we have we have successfully performed the splitting splitting our data into training and testing so i have maintained the test size as 0.2 here this is uh, to be focused and this is a function like a directly training test split i have passed the two matrices x and y and the test size depending on that the our data will be splitted it's our wish uh, we can split uh, in any size so from here let's uh, run the system with different models like a different machine learning algorithm so first of all i am using support vector machine algorithm and i am making a prediction prediction and then we are uh, going with model to logistic regression and finally decision tree classifier in total we are going to uh, build the project using three different machine learning algorithms like uh, first of all i have to import the svc uh, from the library sklearn i have imported the svc algorithm like sub support vector machine and we are supposed to model fit this part is called the uh, term as model fitting it is nothing but uh, just we are training we are uh, training the system by our training data this is the training input and this is the training output y train x train so here success one on running successfully our system is uh, trained like svc model algorithm is trained now let's uh, try to predict 
I'm using the prediction one. This is a, a list. So all the prediction values will be <coughs> appended in the prediction one. And in order to find the accuracy, I'm also importing the accuracy score from the SQL and metrics. I have already told you guys like uh, we'll be finding the accuracy by comparing the predictions against the output value like uh, our training output sorry testing output y test and prediction one we are supposed to <coughs> compare them i'm um, just trying to check out the accuracy okay 96.7 like uh, i need it in percentage so <coughs> multiplying with 100 yes 96.66 this is the accuracy we got using the model one that is svm okay then uh, let's go with the model 2 and before going with model 2 let me tell you like uh, let's print the output like for i in range of len of prediction print So here I'm trying to just trying to print the values by com uh, I want to compare it see the first column is the uh, testing output and the second column is the predicted output see if we see the values compare the values everywhere it's fine the reason behind the accuracy of 96.66 is that we got something wrong prediction right so the wrong prediction if we observe it like it is here like iris virginica uh, the actual output should be but uh, the prediction was iris versical so out of 30 entries or out of 30 testing data inputs we got one uh, entry wrong like uh, 29 by 30 will be our accuracy like a percentage so we got 96.66 that is the reason so now let's observe the uh, logistic regression model so let's uh, fit the model initially so i have imported the logistic regression from the scikit like as sklearn and then i have trained the, like uh, fitted the model by passing the training inputs x train and y train so now the system is built successfully now let's uh, training was done now let's predict oh we got the 100 percent of accura accuracy for prediction 2 see if we want to observe it here let me show you this is the data like we got 100 percent of accuracy because each row is matched there is no wrong prediction um, by this algorithm prediction 2 and now let's uh, go for the decision tree classifier this is a different algorithm and even i have to, we are supposed to import it and then after importing just create an instance so then fit the model with the input training uh, data like x train and y train training input and training output so once the system is uh, trained so it is ready for the predictions so prediction 3 so even for the prediction 3 or the model 3 we got a 96.67 percentage of accuracy so the reason behind it is even we got some one prediction wrong out of these uh, 30 predictions so by this part uh, we are done with our project like uh, we have compared the accuracies of these three models model one two three using logistic regression svc like a support vector machine and then decision tree classifier so finally i'd like to create a classification report so this classification report tells us about the true false i mean true positive true negatives or true false positive and false negatives so you can uh, research about this like uh, go uh, search about classification report you will get a clear idea this is not mandatory by this part we have we are done with our project and finally so the if you observe the last code cell so in this course code cell i am just trying to give a new data to the system so now our system is ready right but i want to test with uh, manual data like i have given the manual data of three entries like uh, for three flowers so i am just running the system for the predictions so the predictions are the for, for the pre first input iris setosa and second input uh, we got versi color and finally virginica so this is how the project runs like basically we train the system using the training data and then we check it with the testing data and after the we got some good accuracy we uh, keep the model for the real world like uh, completely new data like real world object uh, problems